Week. I am your host, Chris Maselli, with another episode of the podcast dedicated to your Colorado Avalanche. And with me today is King Dowett from milehighsticking.com, and he will be with me for the duration of the episode today. Uh, day two of our prep week. Uh, if you didn't listen to yesterday's show, I had Will Scouch from Scouching, uh, and we kind of discussed some of the prospects. Uh, in the avalanche system and today king and i will talk about kind of like the main storylines he does like i said he writes for mile high sticking so we're going to kind of get into what to expect in terms of the big storylines coming out of uh, the colorado avalanche camp before we get to king follow the show on social media outlets l-o-p-n underscore avalanche on twitter on instagram search for locked on avalanche and send any questions, comments, concerns, and or opinions to LockdownAvalanche at gmail.com. All right, so if you are watching through Nine News, you can see King is with me already. Uh, so let's bring him into the fold and kind of get some updates on how you're doing so far this year, five days into a brand new year. Uh, how's things going for you so far today, sir? Five days? Uh, are we at five already? When guess, this comes out, it will be five. Out, be five days. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So how's it going so far into the new year? Not bad. Um, I'm, for the most part, excited for some NHL hockey. Um, yeah. I think most it. of us are. I think we're itching to get started on, a, on an NHL season, especially when you have a team like Colorado is that ex- is expected to do some special things for this year. That might right. help a little. <laughs> that, that usually does help. A little bit. So, um, all right. You write for Mile High Sticking, correct? Correct. Yep. Um, so anything, any new articles you have kind of coming down the pipeline that we should kind of uh, be on the lookout for that are maybe coming up soon? I have uh, something that should be out tomorrow or I guess maybe today when this comes out. Right. And it's going to be kind of a breakdown about who's in our conference division. Oh, nice. Just right. like a little breakdown team by team, um, highlighting the good parts, uh, the bad part. I mean, good parts is obviously that we have all three California teams. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, bad parts is Patrangelo is still in our division. Somehow. Very true. Very true. All right. So we can be on the lookout for that. That's good. All right. Mm-hmm. What, what do you think about the division? Are you, do you think like, you know, I, I've talked about it quite a bit and, you know, I, I think it's the weakest division, which obviously helps the Avalanche in terms of seeding, but might not help them in terms of preparation for the playoffs. What's your take on their division? The Avalanche got very lucky by who's in their division because they could have gotten Dallas and they didn't. So you have a very strong one, two, three with the Avs, Vegas, and St. Louis. Like, barring any. I guess circumstances, those are probably going to be the top three teams. You would think so. Right? Yeah. And who do you think is going to take that fourth spot? If you had to guess preseason, what's your prediction on that? It's tough. I like know. it's very because you have Arizona. I mean, like, even though Taylor Hall didn't necessarily play to his full extent last season, you still lose Taylor Hall in a group on Arizona that isn't necessarily the best group of forwards. Sure. But then you have Darcy Kemper. Who can keep you in some games. Very much so. Exactly. Exactly. So so you're thinking Arizona. <laughs> it's going to be a toss-up between Arizona and Minnesota, in my opinion. Okay. Because Minnesota, they have Kaprizov coming in. They still have a solid core, mm-hmm. but Arizona has Darcy Kemper. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, that's a good point. So when it comes down to w- if you're kind of, you know, reading the tea leaves and, and what will push a team ahead, uh, comes usually comes down to goaltending. Pretty much. So, yeah. All right. I agree. Um, all right. So lots to get to with the Avalanche. Um, the not preseason. I don't know. There, there's no preseason. Training camp, I guess. Training camp. Uh, is underway. <clears throat> Lines have come out. And, you know, this is all th- – we know Jared Bednar is going to change things up. Um, maybe not – maybe what we see right now will be what we have uh, for game one. 
but you know he's going to change things up as as the season goes along. Are, um, what do you think of the lines as they are, as, as you've seen them now? Do you think that will stick for most of the season with, I think the big um, thing that everybody sees is Landeskog down to the second line and Burkowski up to the first line. Do you think that sticks for game one and into the foreseeable future? Or is this just uh, training camp and we're just seeing what works? I think it will. I think having Burkowski with Rantanen and McKinnon worked very well in the playoffs. It was one of the Avalanche's strongest points in that first round. Obviously, I mean, it's unfortunate. I'm hoping we'll find out what's going on with uh, that group of players um, and uh, if they'll be able to play. But even still, Burakovsky is a great match for uh, Rantanen and McKinnon. He, like, you have, like, that chemistry there. I think you could see it mixed around a bit as the season gets going, but I think uh, Burakovsky, I think he's going to be staying on the top line. Uh, I I think he is primed for a great season, Burakovsky. I don't, I don't think enough people are really kind of paying attention to him. People are kind of always, always looking at, you know, uh, McKinnon and Ranton mm. and, and guys like that. Um, and yeah, I think he will benefit immensely from being on that top line. He's got one season under his belt with the abs. He's more comfortable with the team. You heard all last year that Nathan McKinnon was saying how uh, he was telling him to shoot more. I think now he's more comfortable shooting more, maybe like your first year in a new uh, uniform and you're playing with an all world athlete, even though he's telling you to shoot, you still might have be maybe not so trigger happy. Uh, but maybe now this, this, you know, being one year removed, I think he's going to have a fantastic season in my opinion. Oh, definitely. Like I you could see just so many times, especially the Arizona round, just so many times how Burkowski was getting assists on like McKinnon goals and like Ranson and goals. The chemistry is there. Yeah. It'd be ridiculous to break it up. Yeah, I agree. I, I do. And I do think that um, Jared Bednar is not, like I said, he's not afraid to, switch up lines and with this season being the way it is you know 56 games you don't want to get off to a slow start so if for whatever reason they do not that they're losing games maybe he's just not happy with uh maybe the pace or something like that he's got no problem moving uh Nathan, um excuse me uh gabe landeskog back up to that top line for a couple shifts oh easy and infuse some life you know what i mean like he yeah. he, he has all of these options at his disposal it's crazy it's crazy okay. just how much the Avs wingers on the second and third line get slept on because you have guys like uh, Nachushkin, you have, um, like you said, Landeskog, all these guys that could easily fit up there depending on what situation it is. Right, definitely. There's just so much depth there. Uh, Donskoy. Yeah. Yeah. It just The list goes on and on. <laughs> um We've heard from training camp that, well, in one breath, we heard Jared Bednar say everybody was healthy. And then we heard five guys were scratched because of, uh, you know, what's the term that they're using? Uh, what's the big term that they're using? Un- but, un- un- unfit to play. Unfit, unfit to, to play. play. Thank you. Um, and there's five of them. I know Grubauer is one. Landis Gog is another. Um, have, uh, do you do you have do you know the guys that are playing? uh those two? I know Eric Johnson's on the list. Johnson is on the list. Um, there's two I'm missing. Yeah, yeah. But regardless, uh, what do you make of that? Do you think this is COVID related, or do you think this is because that's a very broad term, and mm-hmm. they don't have to go beyond that. That's all they have to say. And you know, guys like us will sit here and do a podcast about what we think it is. So, anything else that you're hearing on that? End? I don't like. I really hope it's not, and it's none of our business really for us to know, but there's a part of me, because a lot of these guys had injuries Mm -hmm. last season. So it could be a reoccurring thing. And it could be just like, even with Grubauer where he had the surgery and then now he's coming back and was supposedly healthy. So it could be precautionary. It could be precautionary related to COVID. 
I'm not sure. Like there, there could be a, a couple of factors, but a lot of these guys had recurring injuries, so it could likely be that. Yeah, I, it, and like you said, could be anything at this point in the game. Mm-hmm. Um, but because we just get that little unfit to play, we have no clue what it is. So yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't, not worried about it right now. I don't think anybody should be really worried about it. Um, if it goes on and on and on, then and if you're paying attention and they haven't come back in a couple weeks, then, you know, maybe well, something, something to to consider long term. But I don't think that's going to happen right now. No. Yeah. Um, speaking of Grubauer, um, I think a, a big thing that was kind of going around Avalanche circles, at least in the fan base, was bringing it. At least the fan base wanted to see a, a goalie come in. And Sackick said that's not going to happen. Um, so. Pretty early on in the offseason, you know, he stuck to that. And Grubauer and Francois are the tandem in goal. Uh, do you think uh, this they can hold up for an entire season? Because it's injuries have been a thing for them, for both of them. Um, and I think they're a good duo, but they, are. they have to get over the injury hump. Do you think that they can do it in a season when games are constant? There's not a lot of breaks in the schedule. The thing with Grubauer is he's a fantastic starter. Like he's the perfect starter for a team like this. You don't necessarily, it would be nice to have a, like a Vesna nominee or like a constant <laughs> guy like that. It would be rock solid, but Grubauer is great when he's healthy. But that's the problem that when he's healthy, when he's healthy <laughs> and Francois as well, like he was able to play when he was healthy and as much as Hunter Miska, I guess, is getting slowly, potentially NHL ready, like we'll have to see. Mm-hmm. If both goalies are kind of iffy, then that's a problem. And it hurt the team last season, the playoffs. Uh, and I really like both of them. But, you know, like you said, you you need stability at that position. You do. And... Um, they they've given it to you in in small doses and in those other doses they're hurt and i really like Fant francos i think he is is the perfect backup for for grubauer um you but when you ask him to do too much i just don't know if he can hold up um and after that game the the outdoor game and when grubauer got hurt and he took over he was he was lights out he was fantastic so i i and then the season Put, was put on pause so we mm-hmm. never really got to see what he could do for an extended period of time and going into a play because i don't think grubauer would have came back last year no I, I think he was out so we would have got to see really what francis is made of for the long term um because right now i think that's suspe- every, everything about the goalies right now is suspect due to injuries it's not really due to play it, it's due to injuries mm-hmm. you'd agree with that yeah, the yeah. thing with Francis is, and you saw it, it was in the play-in round against Dallas. Mm-hmm. You saw him put up, uh, I believe that was a shutout. It might yeah, be remembering it wrong. It was a shutout, yeah. I think it was, yeah. Yeah. And no, he, he just, he when he can, he can stand on his head. And the Avalanche are lucky to have two goalies like they do now. Mm-hmm. But it's all a matter of if both can stay healthy at the same time. Right. That's a, and it is a big if. I think that is the big question mark about r- swirling around this team mm-hmm. uh, heading into this season. So, um, all right, let's uh, hear from one of our sponsors of today. Are you a gambler? I'm not. You're, okay. So I try to be, and I, and I, but I go in knowing that I'm terrible at it. Well, at it. time's depending on the time. Okay. <laughs> Uh, do, do you like put anything down on like the avalanche knowing uh, that they're the favorites? I might, depending <laughs> on who our sponsor is. Uh, well, those, I, you don't have to tell me who you put it with, but in mm-hmm. the future, uh, Bet Online AG is our sponsor for uh, betting online. Uh, lots to bet on right now. The NHL season is around the corner, basketball season is in full swing. It's the postseason for the NFL and for college football. Mm-hmm where betting is usually off the charts, do it at betonline.ag. If you sign up today for a free account, 
you use the promo code locked on and you get a 50% welcome bonus. So put a hundred dollars in your accounts and they give you an extra 50. It's a pretty sweet deal. So don't sit on the sidelines anymore. Get in on the action. Don't forget to use that promo code locked on to get 50% more on your first deposit betonline.ag. All right. So I had mentioned um, that Grubauer got hurt in the outdoor game. And surprisingly, seems like the Avalanche are going to get another outdoor game in February. Didn't see this coming. Didn't see this on the radar. Uh, I thought, you know, all outdoor games were just going to be scrapped for the year. And they technically were (laughs) the ones that they had scheduled. But they implemented two games in like Tahoe, Avalanche, and Vegas being one of them. Um, what do you make of this? You think this is a, a good move? Do you think this because you're not going to have fans, right? So what do you what do you make of all this? I heard a lot of people upset at the teams that they picked, and they were saying like, "Oh, if it's in Vegas or if it's in Lake Tahoe, why shouldn't like why should it be the Avalanche? It should be the Kings. It should be the Sharks." No one wants to, I mean, except for those cities. I mean, I'm not going to take on their fans. No one else wants to see those teams. They're not good. You have two of the best teams, not only in their division, but in the league. Do you want that? This is a perfect matchup. It's not like when Chicago and was playing in an outdoor game every season or something like that. These are two of the best teams in the league head to head. Right. And they're going to be like playing each other, what, like eight times a season. Mm -hmm. This is a great game. Like it's like, uh, like Philly, they're playing Boston and like, that's just Boston, which is fine. But like, this is two of the best teams head to head. Like this is a perfect outdoor matchup. I think the only team that uh, has a right to be upset is St. Louis, (laughs) you know, because this is like you said, like this is a top, this is a top heavy division. Uh, with Vegas, Colorado, and St. Louis. So, you know, one of those teams has to be the odd team out, and it just happens to be St. Louis. I'm a little bit surprised they didn't keep it, you know, rivalry between, like, Colorado and St. Louis within the normal divisions. Um, But I got no problem with the Vegas-Colorado matchup. Like you said, they're going to be going at each other eight times during the season. It's going to come down to those three teams. You're 100% right. That's what, like, at that point in the in the season, we're going to be approaching two months into the season. Uh, that's what people want to see. They want to see top the top of the the standings teams. No disrespect to the Kings, and I like the Kings. I I, I think the oh Kings definitely can, yeah. I think the Kings can make some some moves, um, but I don't think people really want to see uh kings versus like ducks type of outdoor game you know what i mean like yeah people want to see nathan mckinnon on display they want to see that stuff and the best thing about it is as much as i love to go on here and say oh the avalanche are going to win the outdoor game i don't know and that's great like that's a cool thing oh sure absolutely that way you can get i mean mind you if last season can tell us anything you don't know who's going to win the outdoor game thank you tyler tofoli Yes. Well, and that's the other part of it is the abs are oh for two, right? I believe so. They've had two outdoor games. Yeah. They, and they lost the first one to Detroit. Right. Because that, that that game was played on my birthday and they, they uh, gave up a goal. I think it was in like the last minute or something like that. It would have went to overtime. <sighs> that has not uh, been a good, no, yeah, I mean, outdoor games time. have not been kind to the avalanche. So uh, maybe they can get over the hump because, if they don't, it's slowly turning into like game seven for them where they just can't seem to win outdoor games. It's just that last minute. It is, man. I don't I don't get it. Um, so when that happens, that's end of February. Um, shortly after that, I don't know. I don't have the exact now. Maybe it's like a month or so after that is uh, the trade deadline. I think that's early April, uh, actually, is the trade deadline. Um Avalanche typically don't do big moves under Joe Sackick anyway uh, at the trade deadline. Um, and this team is the way it's constructed is to, to win obviously a Stanley cup. Do you think there will be any holes that they need to fill that they'll need to address in at or at the trade deadline, like minor moves 
or do you think they could make a big splash for somebody that's looking to unload a, a top top talent? I really don't think so. I think there really isn't an area where the Avalanche need to really improve. Of course, if the right player comes around and they just completely make a splash, then maybe. Mm-hmm. But I'd say something maybe like a small move. Like I think they're going to trade a defenseman at some point this season. Hmm. Basically because right now it's looking like Bowen Byram is going to make the team. Hmm. You think he will? I think he will. So who's the odd man out for that? I mean, I'm hearing that's tough. Yeah. I'm hearing Ian Cole. I don't know. It could be Ian Cole. Yeah. It's, it's tough. Cause like with Eric Johnson, as great as he's been for the team, as much as long as he's been with the team, I don't think he comes back next season. Who's this? Eric Johnson. You don't think is so. I I don't think so. So they, you think he, they buy him out, or you think the Kraken take him if he's open to that, which he has to be. Like, so how yeah. do you think he finds his way out of Denver? I see something like, uh, well, with the Penguins and Mark Andre Fleury, like a couple of years ago, that was a trade situation, I believe, or like where they kept him exposed mm-hmm. or something. I could see something like that being done. He's a great guy to have in your team. It's just the Avalanche with the cap and contract years for landis gog it's just it doesn't the car as well just doesn't look in the books i mean that's something it's not a problem right now like they have a a great defense as it is right now but uh what they're going to do with these guys is definitely going to be something to watch because um yeah i mean eric johnson is making six million a year ian cole's making four and a half a year that's a good chunk of money that you can take off the books and bring in bowen byram Mm-hmm. Uh, who's making less than a million and Connor Timmons and Easy. you know what I mean? And, and you've saved 10 and a half million dollars. It's, I mean, you're, you're losing guys that are, you know, fan favorites and, you know, Eric Johnson, but it's a, it's, you know, you always hear it's a business. It comes it down is. to business. It comes down to numbers. So uh, that's definitely a storyline to watch in the future. Um, but maybe Ian Cole a little bit earlier than that. Maybe, I think he, so. Yeah, I think the Avalanche. Cool. The Avalanche need, should hold on. Like Eric Johnson, that's a no-brainer to hold on to this season. He mm-hmm. he's still like I guess barring an injury, he's still extremely productive for the Avalanche. He's one, still one of their top defensemen. Er, Ian Cole, if he's going to be either played on the third line or benched, there really isn't any reason to keep him. There's Tons of teams that would be happy to take a player like him. Yeah. 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 I, I think, and you know, this goes going back to the, the trade part and it's, it's an all fluid situation. There could be something where the abs suffer, uh, you know, a bad injury and they need to fill a spot and then maybe they make a bigger move. Clearly we don't know what's going to happen, but um, yeah, I mean, this team is just built to win. So I don't really see the need to go after, one of those, you know, a player that is is put up by another team that's just lo- looking to unload some some money at the trade deadline. The Avs don't need to bite on those guys. It, it doesn't seem necessary. The kind of player they would have needed to get is a player like Brandon Saad, and they already mm-hmm. got him. <laughs> <laughs> like exactly, exactly. What? So talk to that. What do you think uh, the new acquisitions in Brandon Saad and Devon Taves bring to this team? Because it just makes them scarier than they already were oh easily like uh with devon was it devon or devon so know this i so the thing is i would always say devon because there's a family member and i've said this before in the show there's there's a family member in my family whose name is devon so i'm just used to saying devon but i was corrected in saying he pronounces it devon don't know I, i i mean i i guess that so I've tried to switch my way of saying it into Devon Taves. Okay, I had this trouble but, with uh, Zadorov, Zadorov. Okay, yeah. And, there, uh, there's always, yeah. I mean, it's hockey. The there's names, always one player, names are, right? The names are crazy, so you, you do the best you can. So yeah, we'll just call him by his last name, which we can all agree on is Taves. So we'll, Taves. we'll just say that. <laughs> what do you think they add with Taves? He's just a fantastic playmaker. Like his stats in the Islanders run just speak to that. I know he was playing like second unit 
with the Islanders and there was a lot of, there was a few fans, I guess they were happy to see him go or something, but he is just a great playmaker. And if he's going to be playing with Makar, which I believe he is, mm-hmm. that's just a great pairing. Which were you a little bit surprised at that pairing, that that pairing came out because of how well Makar, uh, Makar and Graves played last year. They maybe would keep them together, but that's another pairing like that top line that was kind of, you know, had Burkowski in that top line, which people saw that and like, oh, that's different. Um, I think people saw the Makar Taves line and weren't expecting that because of how well Makar and Graves played. Do you think that sticks? I think that could be a thing that's game to game. Like you could see one game where depending on who they're like who they're facing, where they'll stick with that Taze um Makar pairing. But the way him and Graves played in the playoffs, that is just something that like it's like we said with Landis Gog swapping him with Burakovsky. That's just a mm-hmm. something you don't want to miss. So I think it's going to be like a game to game kind of thing. Right. I agree. But and it's a good problem to have. Oh, easy. You, you, you can switch up these lines and you're fine. You're comfortable no matter what. So it's good. Um, all right, let's hear from our friends over at RockAuto.com. Are you, are you a car? You're not a betting guy. Are you a car guy? Uh, I don't have a license, so you don't have a license. Okay, don't so have a license. Then, so the answer is no. And and to me, I I'm not either. Uh, but I I like. I admire a car. I can admire there you go. That I think that's that's the the best way to put it. Like I, I drive whatever I want to. I don't care. Like just get me point A to point B. But you know, I can admire um, a good car. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Uh, where I live right now, it's the winter, and um, you know, cars are breaking down. If you need any parts for your car, go to <laughs> RockAuto.com. And with the ever increasing number of makes and models, it's now impossible to stock all the parts you need in a traditional chain storefront. Why endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning and wait while the counterman orders the parts on his computer, choosing only the brand his warehouse happens to carry. You have a computer and you have access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. Rockauto.com is a family business serving auto parts customers online for 20 years. Go to rockauto.com to shop for auto and body parts from hundreds of manufacturers. Best of all, Prices at rockauto.com are always reliably low and the same for professionals and do-it-yourselfers. Why spend up to twice as much for the same part? Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck right locked on in the section where they ask, how did you hear about us? So they know that we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need at rockauto.com. All right, a couple questions. Um, and one of them is we got to talk about Nathan McKinnon. I haven't really talked about him at all. And it's just easy to, it's really easy to ignore him because he's just so awesome. You just rely on him and know he's going to be out of this world. Mm-hmm. But I'm curious to see what he does this year. Um, because it's obviously a shortened season, I don't think that matters to him. The team is so deep. The one thing that we're hearing out of um, training camp straight from Coach Bednar's mouth is this is a deep team. This is the deepest team they've ever had. What direction do you think that brings Nathan McKinnon? Do you think he his game just stays top notch in terms of points he's scoring? Or do you think he doesn't need to be the guy that they lean on all the time because they have all this other talent? It could go in any direction. I want to hear what you think. With McKinnon, he there's one thing and anyone who's ever seen him play can attest to this. He always stands out on the ice more mm-hmm. than any other player. That no matter what, like as many players, as much depth as the Avalanche have this season, he's always going to be a step above. That the Avalanche are like they're basically blessed with a generational player. Yeah. I know. We are. I agree. Um I've told so many people like that are that are not you know real big hockey people. Uh, you turn on an Avalanche game, and I won't say anything to you. Just point out who you think is the best player on the ice, and you know, ninety nine out of one hundred times is going to be Nathan McKinnon. Like he's that good. He stands out that much. Easy. And and I I think you know I asked the question, but I kind of know the answer. Like it's 
he's the type of guy that does not take the foot off the gas pedal. So he, I don't think he's going to look at it as like, I have all this talent behind me and I'll let them, you know, kind of uh, uh, like, kind of like share the wealth type of thing. I don't think he's built that way. <laughs> I think he's built to just go, go, go and just keep do, playing the way he's playing. Who cares who else is on the rest of my roster? They'll, they'll keep up with me. And he's lucky sure. because like, yeah, he has that chemistry with ranting in where, and then McBurkowski where they'll definitely get the best parts of playing with him. They'll like rack up a lot of those. Po- and again, like it's not all due to playing with McKinnon. It's just a side effect of playing with McKinnon. Right. But yeah. McKinnon, like, yeah, he's that kind of player where he'll make who he plays with better. And like, I think he said that Ranton has helped him get his game better where it's kind of like a dual situation, but he's not going to take a step back for other players. He's just going to go. He's I, I could see him in the top three in scoring at least. I would think so. Yeah. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't see any reason why he wouldn't be. He, I think, and that's going to be year after year that he's going to be right up there with, you know, the dry sidles and McDavid's of the world. I don't see any, any, slow in his game whatsoever. I think he's excited to have this deep of team. Um, and he's going to put it to good use. He's not going to rely on them to, you know, step up their game. He's going to step up his game even more to make them step up their game even more. And it's just a chain reaction of pretty much craziness. Yeah. Um, all right. So Nathan McKinnon, obviously superstar, no questions about him going to the opposite end of the spectrum and guy, one guy that, Avalanche fans have always had questions about in Tyson Jost. They gave him a one-year deal, kind of like a prove it or lose it type of deal. I would I would take out of what they gave him. Uh, what do you think? Do you think this is? I mean, he's still a young guy. He's only twenty-two years old. So uh, you know, do you think that he, he just needed needs some time to mature and and this will be the year where he, I don't want to say breaks out and has this you know incredible mm-hmm. all star type of season, but starts to play more consistent. Do you, do you think this is a year for him? I'd like to say so. That hopefully it is, but based on his play the last few seasons and based on who else the Avalanche have in their system, uh, Martin Cout, um, O'Connor. It just, if it's not at the level it should be, then which based on how he's played before, it just hasn't always been consistent. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see it and I'm sure everyone else would, but if it's just not at that level, then it's just not going to work. And that's, it doesn't happen with every player. And it could be a situation where he, gets picked up by like a uh, Kraken or by another team, but it just, it hasn't happened yet. And if he's playing in the fourth unit and there's other players like Kout who are basically on their way up, it's yeah. not, it's like, yeah, it's a situation where they might be getting the upper hand if he's not performing. Yeah. It's an interesting thing because if he is that, if, if they have him long enough and, and you just, have to come to terms with he's a third, fourth line guy uh, and be okay with that. I think the avalanche keep him around, but they are so deep in their current roster and their, their prospect pool where he's replaceable. And I hate saying that because he, he seems like a, a good kid and sure. we've seen glimpses of, wow, like that he had a hat trick early in the season last year like i think it was early november we had he had a hat right. trick and you're like that's what it, we he got that so early in the year people were like this is it like it's finally clicked for him and then he went ghost for like 12 games so it's still that up and down with him and like i said if they didn't have an incredible talent pool all around him um i think they'd keep him around but they have mm. guys just waiting to to take over his spot that's the frustrating part. Like it is there. He does have the factor that can come out, but there's just been so many games where he's just been absent on the ice. Mm -hmm. And it's, if it's a reoccurring thing, they haven't really found 
like a good match for him, a good place for him to be, then it just isn't going to work. All right. I hear you. So, all right. And any other to kind of wrap up any thing that you are looking forward to in this season that maybe we haven't touched on um, when it comes to the avalanche and uh, what looks like to be a, a pretty promising season for them. Anything that, that you're specifically looking at could be player storyline, whatever. Uh, I'm excited to see McCarr again, hopefully uh, put up a great sophomore season. I think in that one year, he just rose so high in terms of the top defenseman in the league. And he just, especially in the playoff, I mean, I could talk about him in the playoffs, but obviously the regular season too. Yeah. he He's just in the same way that McKinnon is just at another level. And I guess I'm not going to knock Ranton in, but McCarr is just at a totally different level in terms of defensemen. And I think we're going to see a repeat this season. Oh, yeah. Oh, I think so. <laughs> I think we've only scratched the surface with with Cal McCarr. I think like a, he is. a very very tiny uh, tip of the iceberg. Yes. Oh yeah. No. What, what do they say? Like iceberg, ten percent is above the surface. The other ninety is below it. Hmm. Uh, yeah. With that, that's exactly Cal McCarr. We we have not seen hardly anything from him yet, which is scary. Which is scary. So. Um. Yeah, man. I th- I think it's going to be an exciting season. Uh, I wish it was your typical regular season, but. I mean, it is what it is. Everybody's yeah. under the same uh, situation, so uh, nobody's getting special treatment in that aspect. But um, yeah, I think this is going to be a, a fun season for the Avalanche. So uh, yeah. throw out where uh, people can find you to follow you and f- on social media and stuff like that. I'm on uh, Twitter as K. O'Reilly. Um, I'm very prolific, I guess. That's a good way to put it. <laughs> okay. You can find me. Uh, with my 20 tweets a day. Um, yeah. I also produce content on YouTube as Nostalgia Ice. And uh, that's N O S T A L G I S E. And what kind C. of content is that? Uh, I do videos about um, just retro NHL stuff. Um, oh, cool. I'm a huge Jersey guy. Um, I love, I have. Right now, I think it's about 15 jerseys, uh, mm-hmm. definitely more on the way. And it's just like cool stuff like that. I have a video about how the Avalanche were almost the Rocky Mountain Extreme. Yes. Uh, stuff like that. It's fun. Um, recently, it's- I just saw uh, Aesthetics just put out a video that was pretty much a couple of mine, just but like higher production quality. And I kind of thought, well, like they're the Wayne Gretzky of that kind of stuff. So. <laughs> Right, right. Hard angle. Um, yeah. All right. Awesome, man. Well, um, I appreciate you coming on, and uh, we'll have you again at some point in the season if you want to come back and talk some more Avalanche. I don't know why you wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> one one thing I can say is yeah. there is something uh, that might be of interest to Avs fans that is on its way. Okay. That's all I can say. Hmm. Something very familiar from a couple of seasons ago. That will be on its way. And that's all I can say. Okay. Keeping everybody in suspense. I love it. When when can we expect it? Like a couple of weeks away? A couple I, was ho- away? I was hoping to announce it by today. It's okay. still, all I can say is it's still in the works, but okay. it's something Avalanche fans are very much going to enjoy. All right. I mean, if that's not any reason to follow you, we, we'll, we'll, if we follow you on Twitter, we'll be able to know what this is. You will. Okay. So I can promise that. All right. Awesome. Um, all right. So that is uh, that wraps up day two of our prep week. Tomorrow, we'll be back with Ian Comist from Avs Insider and be talking about uh, some of the expectations for the Avalanche as a uh, further season and individual players. So tune in to that tomorrow. One last time, King, thank you very much for, for coming on today. Uh, very much appreciate it. And uh, yeah, definitely have you on again sometime in the future. All right. All right, everybody. Thank you for tuning in and uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a good night.